Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. I really didn't want to be the Dark Lord. Chapter 21. Remember to stay with me later, don't leave. Do you remember the spells I taught you last night? Well, I remember. Dumbledore taught Shaji a lot of spells in addition to explaining transfiguration to Shaji last night, and he didn't want Shaji to use the unforgivable curse again. Okay, let's go, then. Dumbledore raised his elder wand and cast an anti-apparition spell. The Auror behind him also raised his wand and cast this spell at the same time, and some experienced Aurors teamed up to make up a few more, such as unpopular spells such as the Anti-Door Key. From this moment on, the werewolf wizards below will no longer be able to apparate away, even if they have a door key. Dumbledore's wand was pointed at the wizard on the ground who was torturing the child, and a fiery red light shot from his wand, hitting the werewolf wizard squarely. The werewolf wizard was immediately hit by the volley, and fell to the ground and could not move. Shaji was shocked, the stun spell also has this kind of special effect like electric welding. It can only be said that, as expected of Dumbledore, he has very profound magical skills. With Dumbledore's shot, the aurors behind him poured spells. Spell rays of various colors kept shooting at those werewolf wizards. Under the sneak attack, several werewolf wizards who were on guard were brought down at the beginning. Soon, these desperados realized that they were being attacked, and ran out of the tent one after another, waving their magic wands, and fighting back towards the sky. But the Aurors all used the disillusionment curse, and the sun was shining brightly at noon, which was very dazzling. Therefore, these werewolf wizards couldn't hit the Aurors who were shuttling back and forth in the sky at all. And the Aurors all have a way to identify the position of their teammates, so they are not afraid of accidental injury. After another volley of spells, the Aurors fell to the ground and cast spells in the air, after all, they were a little off point, and there were still many children here. If you are not careful, you will hurt them by mistake. Dumbledore and Shaji also landed on the ground. I have to say that Dumbledore's flying skills are still great. With Shaji just now, I flexibly avoided several Lunger's death killing curses. Not even Shaji's crisis alert talent was triggered. With the illusion curse lifted, ground combat is different from air combat, and if the illusion curse is still in place, it is easy to hurt your own people. After all, in the air, the enemies are all on the ground, just throw the spell down, but on the ground, the enemies are all ahead. The Aurors followed Dumbledore and charged into the camp. Dumbledore was at the forefront, invincible, no werewolf wizard could resist his spell. Shaji followed behind him, throwing out a spell from time to time. Ding, congratulations to the host, you have obtained the stun spell level plus one. Ding, congratulations to the host you have obtained the level of the petrification spell plus one. Dot dot dot. Well, this time the battle, Shaji was extremely relaxed, completely becoming a dungeon of spell leveling. Dumbledore also noticed Shaji's spell at this time, and he was surprised to find that the power of Shaji's spell was constantly getting stronger. Obviously, this is because his proficiency in spells is getting higher and higher. Dumbledore couldn't help sighing. A young wizard who was the same age as Shaji probably couldn't even master the levitation spell. This kind of terrifying magical talent was something he had never seen in his life. Even his close friend back then, and even Tom later, did not have such a terrifying talent. Such a child must not be allowed to go astray like Tom again. Otherwise, the whole world will be plunged into darkness. However, if he walks on the right path, then Shaji will definitely be able to take over his burden in the future and become the mainstay of the wizarding world. Shaji didn't know what was going on in front of Dumbledore's mind, and he was following behind happily brushing up the levels. He didn't even need to dodge. The spells cast by these werewolf wizards couldn't fall within three meters of his body. These little fool spells couldn't break Dumbledore's iron armor charm. The werewolf wizard was completely at a disadvantage, and people kept getting knocked down by the Aurors. It was at noon, there was no moon at all, and if there was a moon, it was not yet full. Therefore, it is extremely easy for these elite Aurors to fight these werewolf wizards who cannot transform into werewolves. The Aurors were divided into several teams, some attacked in front, and some began to search for the cages where the children were kept, and rescued the children who were tortured to the brink of death. Just when Shaji thought that the battle was about to end, suddenly a figure jumped out from the largest tent in the distance. 
Fenrir Greyback. Dumbledore also saw Fenrir Greyback, and his eyes hardened. Fenrir Greyback looked at the surrounding scene in panic. The Aurors, attack didn't take long, only about two or three minutes, and Fenrir Greyback was just awakened from his deep sleep. Seeing the werewolf wizard on his side retreating steadily, he ran away without hesitation. During his escape, his figure began to change strangely. In the end, he turned into a werewolf, landed on all fours, and fled all over the place as if flying. Fenrir Greyback was born a werewolf. He can transform at will, and he doesn't need to be on a full moon. And can stay awake in the transformed state. Dumbledore said to Sha Ji, you stay here, I'll go after him. Now the remaining werewolf wizards have been subdued in sevens and eights, and the rest of them immediately dropped their wands and surrendered after seeing the boss run away. It's safe here, Sha Ji nodded, he participated in this battle, and strictly speaking, these orrs came here to encircle the werewolf wizard because of him. So he doesn't need to defeat the werewolf leader himself to get all the rewards, as long as he is present. Ding, a new quest is released. Please the host personally defeat the werewolf leader Fenrir Greyback. The quest is successful, and you will be rewarded with the Grindelwald Defire gas stove. Warning, this reward is only available for this quest, if you miss it, you will miss it for life. Please the host cherishes this opportunity. System, you're just a jerk. Fierce fire curse, Shaji is actually not uncommon, this is a thing that can be practiced by oneself, no need to take risks. However, if you say that this is Grindelwald's card, that's another matter. This is the fierce fire curse improved by Grindelwald, Shaji really wants it. But the system actually said that in order to get this spell, he had to defeat Fenrir Greyback himself. And he also said that the opportunity is only once, and it is impossible to miss it. This annoyed Sha Ji a lot. Fight, Sha Ji is sure to be able to fight, but Dumbledore has already gone after him. And it's a bit difficult to compete with Dumbledore for the head. It wasn't that Sha Ji underestimated Fenrir Greyback, if he survived a round with Dumbledore, he won. Therefore, the greatest possibility is that when Sha Ji arrived panting, she could only see Greyback tied up like a rice dumpling. However, you have to fight for it, just in case. Shaji hurriedly slipped away from the crowd, and all the Aurors were cleaning up the scene, those who captured the captives, those who rescued the children rescued the children. No one noticed Shaji who slipped away. Shaji slipped to the edge of the forest, and when she saw no one, she turned into a puff of black mist and swept towards Greyback's escape direction. He controlled the black mist to form a ball, and searched the forest silently. Incarnation of the silent Shaji, with extremely sharp five senses. Soon, he found Greyback's trail. After tracking for a while, he saw Greyback running like flying in the woods. Shaji was delighted, very good. It seemed that Dumbledore hadn't found Greyback yet. Greyback in werewolf form ran really fast, if Shaji's incarnation hadn't been silent, he really couldn't catch up with him. Shaji silently and quickly approached Greyback, boom. The silent fog instantly expanded, directly rolling Greyback into the sky. Boom, Greyback fell from a height and hit the ground hard. At such a height, if it wasn't for the werewolf form, he would have been thrown to death long ago, Shaji changed back into a human form, rushed up, and raised his hand to give him an avada. But when Shaji's wand was thrown, it just threw a stun spell. Because he sensed Dumbledore coming. It was not far behind him, and that gaze was fixed on his back. Dumbledore didn't know that Shaji's sensing power was very strong, his vast magic power, under Shaji's silent perception, was like a big light bulb in the dark night. At the same time, the crisis alert talent also gave Shaji feedback, and within 10 seconds, Dumbledore will appear to stop him with the killing curse. So Shaji, who had foresight, turned the death curse into a stun spell. Boom, Greyback who had struggled to get up, suffered a full-level stun spell from Shaji, just brushed and was knocked away several meters away. But Greyback in the werewolf state had extremely high immunity to magic. Shaji knew that although the stun spell was extremely powerful, it failed to stun him. After all, Greyback was born a werewolf, and his resilience was extremely strong. After he fell to the ground, he struggled to get up immediately. His mind was dizzy, as if he would faint in the next second. He bit his tongue violently, and the intense pain made him wake up quickly. Greyback looked at Shaji vigilantly with wolf eyes. 
With a spell of that power, he couldn't be hit a second time. This boy is only so young, why would he cast such a powerful spell? Sha Ji threw a full level petrification spell again. Greyback's werewolf is extremely agile, dodging Sha Ji's spell with a single leap. Sha Ji's attack this time was too obvious, it was easy to dodge it. Greyback took the opportunity to pounce. His speed is really fast, Sha Ji just can't dodge his pounds. Greyback's wolf eyes flashed with excitement, as if he had seen Sha Ji being severely torn apart by his own wolf teeth. Ha! So what if the spell is powerful? It's just a naive little fool. At this time, Dumbledore, who was watching from the side, also moved. He wanted to see Sha Ji's performance, but if he didn't make a move now, it would be bad. He wanted to save Sha Ji, which was a sure thing, but just as he raised his wand, he put it down, and it seemed that he didn't need to do it now. Because Sha Ji not only easily dodged Greyback's pounce, but also slammed a full-level obstacle curse at Greyback's wolf waist from close range. Boom, Greyback was severely knocked away by this impediment spell, crashed into a towering tree in the distance. But just when Greyback hit the big tree, the few twigs on the tree suddenly turned into several sharp long swords. Puff! Greyback's whole body was nailed to the tree trunk with the sword sticking out. It is already exhaling more and inhaling less. Ding! Congratulations to the host for completing the task of rescuing the child kidnapped by the werewolf wizard. And successfully cleared the camp of the werewolf wizard. Reward the host with a treasure chest and plus two skill points. Ding! Congratulations to the host for successfully defeating Fenrir Greyback. Reward the host for the full level Grindelwald gas stove. Greyback was dying now, and he didn't understand how the kid dodged the blow he was bound to hit, as if he knew he was going to pounce. Yes, he still seems to have made an evasive move ahead of time. Of course he didn't know that in front of Sha Ji's crisis alert talent, all his attacks were predicted by Sha Ji. Sha Ji easily dodged his attack and successfully knocked him into the air. With a huge impact, he slammed directly into the trunk of the branch that was transformed into a sharp sword. The sharp sword pierced his heart, and at the moment it pierced his heart, it burst under the control of Sha Ji's magic power. Greyback's heart was blown to pieces. No matter how powerful the vitality and recovery power is, it can't bear such a fatal injury. Sha Ji shook his head helplessly, he used the killing curse, and Dumbledore came out to stop himself, but he just used the spell he taught himself, and Dumbledore just stood aside and watched. Principal, why do you just watch, won't your conscience hurt? Sha Ji murmured a few words secretly, he actually knew that he was not in any danger, because at such a close distance, Dumbledore was absolutely sure to save himself. However, Greyback's pounce was still a fatal attack for Sha Ji, so the crisis alert talent was activated. Excellent spell, boy, I'm proud of you. Dumbledore's blue eyes were full of joy, but I'm even more proud that even in such a critical moment, you didn't use your indispensable forgiveness. I'm really relieved. Facing Dumbledore's praise, Sha Ji didn't show any happy expression. His expression now looks very guilty. Sorry, Professor Dumbledore, I didn't listen to you and went to Greyback alone. Sha Ji said, lowering her head, like a child who just did something wrong and was discovered by an adult. It's okay. Boy, no one can take things like that with equanimity, not even me. Dumbledore's eyes were soft. It's just that you must not be so impulsive in the future, because if you are in danger, everyone who cares about you will feel sad. Taking risks rashly is irresponsible to everyone who cares about you. I'm sorry, Professor, can you not tell this matter? Just say that you defeated Greyback. Sha Ji's expression looked extremely sad. Why is that? Dumbledore was a little surprised. A young wizard at your age defeated a fully transformed werewolf all by himself. You'll be famous. Famous. No, I don't care about that, professor. I just know that if Cassandella knows that I do something like this again, she will kill me. Sha Ji smiled wryly. Well, I'll respect your opinion. Dumbledore smiled. It's rare to meet a little wizard who is as indifferent to fame and fortune as you are. However, I'm proud of you. Well, let's go. Here's the deal let the Aurors deal with it. I think you should hurry back to the camp now, find Madame Pomfrey, and give you a good physical examination, your body has been delayed long enough. Dumbledore motioned for Sha Ji to grab his hand, it might be a little uncomfortable for the first time, but just get used to it. Crack, 
There was a sound like a whip hitting the ground, and Shaji and Dumbledore disappeared in place. Shaji felt like she was squeezed into long strips like a piece of plasticine, and then stuffed into the water pipe, and then the water pipe was thrown into the drum washing machine, spinning wildly. By the time Shaji finally felt squeezed out of the pipe, he had already appeared in the previous camp. In front was the white tent where Madame Pomfrey was. This feeling was so uncomfortable that Shaji almost vomited out his lunch. I almost threw up when I first apparated, but I've gotten used to it after a while. Dumbledore blinked. Okay, you go in, I have to go over there to help clean up the mess. Shaji nodded. Crack, Dumbledore disappeared in place. Now Dumbledore is very satisfied with Shaji, he doesn't care about fame and wealth, he is different from Voldemort. He decided to educate Shaji well, and he must not let his path go astray, because he was also worried that Shaji would become a person like Grindelwald. Ding, the host's acting skills are amazing. This has won Dumbledore's basic trust, which will lay an important foundation for his career as the greatest black, white wizard. It's not your fault. In that case, you issued an emergency mission with a hammer. Why don't I just stay where I am and eat melons, which made me almost use the killing curse in front of Dumbledore again. Ding, I'm not forcing you to go. But you said it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Ding, after all, is it because you are hungry? I am a time traveler, and time travelers are all egoists. When they see good things, they naturally want to collect them. After exchanging a few words with the system, Shaji stepped into the white tent. Shaji's unique temperament made Madame Pomfrey fall in love with this child at first sight. So when she saw the scars on Shaji's body, she shed tears with heartache. Oh, such a cute child, how could they have the heart to do it? This child, even with so many injuries on his body, doesn't cry out in pain, but is still smiling. Really, he is too strong. While checking Shaji's body, Madame Pomfrey complained why he didn't come to her earlier, but followed Dumbledore to do such a dangerous thing. The scars on Shaji's body were so shocking that the therapists present were shocked. It was one such boy who resisted all ordeals and then successfully appealed to Dumbledore, which led to the rescue of the other children who had been caught. This made everyone present admire the boy. After busying for half an hour, Madame Pomfrey finally let Shaji rest after finishing a series of inspections and pouring Shaji a large cup of strange potion. I have to say that they are worthy of being the most outstanding therapists, and now Shaji feels much more comfortable in her body. He was lying comfortably on the bed, separated by a curtain in front of the bed. He heard that children were being brought in one after another outside, and the therapists began to get busy. Shaji opened her panel and began to count the harvest this time. Dot dot dot. Remaining skill points. 2. Curse. Avada Kedavra level 9, full level. Obstacle curse, full level, disarming curse level 1, improved fierce fire curse level 9, full level, PS, no water word count, omitted in the middle. Items. Sorcerer's stone, treasure chest. Talent. Obscure, parcel tongue, the highest level, crisis alertness. Dot dot dot. This time, most of the spells that Dumbledore taught him, except the disarming curse, were upgraded to the full level, and he also got an improved version of the fierce fire curse. The disarming spell was dissatisfied because it was not very practical in the battle just now. In a battle like the one just now, the primary purpose must be to subdue the enemy. Otherwise, if you disarm the opponent's wand, will the opponent still have a second wand? Therefore, it is the best choice to stun or petrify the opponent directly. Being able to defeat the enemy with one spell is the best strategy. As for getting the improved Fierce Fire Curse, Shaji is still very happy. The threshold for the Fierce Fire Curse is actually very low, even a little wizard can release it, but it is one thing to release it, and another thing to control it. The reason why Fierce Fire Curse is black magic is that it is extremely uncontrollable. It is easy to summon, but difficult to control. If it is not controlled, it will continue to devour items and grow stronger. He even has a sliver of his own consciousness. The only difference between this spell and the unforgivable curse is that it still has an anti-curse, and multiple wizards team up to release the 10,000 curses to the end, which can effectively curb it. And Grindelwald's improved Fiercefire curse can make the summoned Fiercefire completely controlled by the summoner's will, and it can also test whether his subordinates are absolutely loyal to him. 
Sha Ji likes the completely controllable Fierce Fire curse. Sha Ji set her sights on the Philosopher's Stone, which can't be taken out yet, because it's too eye-catching. Dumbledore should be very familiar with this thing, so Sha Ji decided to wait until after saying goodbye to Dumbledore before taking it out. The rest is the treasure chest. System, what can I get by opening this treasure chest? Ding. The system treasure chest can randomly open any valuable item, and this item is not limited to this world. Sha Ji's eyes are bright, it is not limited to this world, it is still worth looking forward to. However, the system has lessons learned after all. System, it can't be pseudo-random again, it's random, and then turn around and give me a black magic item or something. Ding, love can't be open, quote dot dot dot, okay, I'll bear it, let's open it. Ding, opening the system treasure chest. Ding, congratulations to the host for obtaining a ring from the world of cultivating immortals. Sha Ji was so excited that she almost fell off the bed. Na ring, is it the kind of ring I imagined? Sumina mustard seeds, many things can be hidden in a small ring. Ding, there is a space of 5 cubic meters in this ring, and the host can store things in it at will. And the time in the ring is completely static. Can it store living things? Sha Ji asked excitedly, he remembered the prophecy he made yesterday, that Nagini got into a ring-shaped object in his hand. Ding, the ring cannot store living things. Living objects cannot enter the ring. Moreover, this ring is bound to the host, so there is no way to lose it anyway, and it can only be opened by the host, unless the host personally authorizes it. People. Ha, huh. Sha Ji touched her smooth chin in wonder, how did Nagini get into this ring? Or is it drilled in, not this ring? However, with the full level untraceable stretching curse, maybe I can make some changes on this ring. Ding, may I ask if the host is receiving the ring now? Receive. Sha Ji only felt that there was an extra ring in his hand. This ring was dusty without any decoration, and it was engraved with incomparably complicated runes, which looked very simple. He looked at the ring in his hand, and then put it on the ring finger of his right hand. A gleam of light flashed, and the ring automatically shrank, and it was firmly put on Sha Ji's ring finger, and then disappeared on Sha Ji's finger. With a thought in Sha Ji's mind, the quaint nuring appeared on his finger again. Interesting, it's actually invisible. System, get the philosopher's stone. A dark red stone with irregular shapes appeared in Sha Ji's palm. After Sha Ji sized it up, he brought the philosopher's stone close to Na Ji, and with a thought, the philosopher's stone disappeared. Sha Ji focused on the ring, and saw the philosopher's stone floating quietly in a vast white space. As long as he wants to move, he can take out the philosopher's stone. That's great so no one can find out that I own a Philosopher's Stone. Sha Ji laughed out loud with joy. Afterwards, Sha Ji remembered that she had also gained two skill points this time. So he directly added two skill points to the prophecy. Now, he is proficient in divination, reaching three points. At first, he didn't feel any difference, but afterward, he found that his celestial eye felt more clearly. And the crisis alert talent has been strengthened. From being able to sense the crisis in the next 10 seconds, it has been strengthened to being able to sense the crisis in the next 20 seconds. System, how far can my prophecy reach now? Ding, the host's crisis awareness talent has been strengthened. Moreover, it can accurately predict what the designated target will encounter in the next month. At the same time, the host has the ability to strengthen its own prophecy through any medium. What is a medium? Ding, such as crystal balls such as dried tea leaves, such as copper coins, drawing lots and so on. To what extent is it strengthened? Ding, it can let the host see some pictures of things that will happen in the next month. The content of the picture is related to the things or people the host wants to predict. Ding, remind the host not to predict your future rashly. Why, Sha Ji was puzzled, he really wanted to see what would happen in his future. Ding, any prediction about the future has a price. The host predicts the future for others. With the help of the system, there is very little price to pay. For example, when apparating, it will feel a little more disgusting than others. But if you predict yourself, the price the host needs to pay will be extremely heavy. Healers cannot heal themselves, and prophets must not predict themselves at will. So, the apparition just now, so disgusting, is because I prophesied Nagini last night. Then, 
if I really prophesied myself, what would happen? Ding. The result is the last thing you want to see. You will randomly lose a person you care about the most, or a thing you cherish the most. Then my crisis vigilance, could it have side effects too? Ding. Crisis awareness belongs to the host's innate skills, and it can only predict crises, so there are no side effects. Shaji breathed a sigh of relief. Well, it's fine if you can't predict yourself. After all, if you know the exact day when you will die, it's meaningless. Shaji finally counted all the gains. Overall, Shaji is very satisfied. However, Shaji decided to make as few prophecies to others as possible in the future. Although the cost of making a small prophecy is very small, it is quite irritating. Now, everything is finally over, and Shaji's tense nerves are completely relaxed. The relaxed Shaji, together with the potion Madame Pomfrey gave him just now, worked. Shaji gradually fell into a dream. Dot dot dot. At the same time, about 10 kilometers away from the camp, a strange snake slowly crawled through the woods. On the snake's head, an afterimage of a human face quickly appeared. Hiss. The snake king named Nagini you mentioned, does it live here? Hiss. This is the territory of the snake king Nagini, but it doesn't seem to be in his lair. Hiss. Okay then, I'll wait for it to come back here, I must subdue it. Dumbledore has also come to Albania. Could it be that he found me? Suddenly this strange snake turned its head vigilantly, and then it saw a young man whose face was pale from fright. Dot dot dot. Dad, is there any news from Shaji now? I haven't received it yet, but with Dumbledore in person, he'll be fine. Dad, I made you an appointment with the best therapist in Saint. Mungos, have you made an appointment yet? Of course, your father still has a bit of face. After hearing about Shaji's deeds, Mr. Dean sent their best therapist. What about the room? Is the room tidy? Your mother has told Cafe to pack up. After answering more than ten times of nearly identical questions from Kashan Della, Mr. Worley became vigilant. The cabbage that his family has raised for so many years, could it be? Mr. Wally's heart suddenly became heavy. Cassie Della has never cared so much about anyone, including him. Dot dot dot. When Sha Ji woke up, it was already night. He had just sneaked out of the tent without Madame Pomfrey's knowledge when he ran into Dumbledore. Dumbledore was accompanied by a well-dressed, stocky, balding middle-aged man. He was holding his top hat in his hand, which he didn't usually put on in front of Dumbledore. When he saw Sha Ji, his eyes lit up, and he stepped forward to shake hands with Sha Ji. After Dumbledore's introduction, Shaji knew that this man who seemed to be servile to Dumbledore turned out to be Cornelius Fudge, the British Minister of Magic who had just taken office. Shaji and Fudge exchanged a few words, and then Fudge planned to leave here. After all, there are still reporters waiting for him to deal with. Fudge had been instructed by Dumbledore to not reveal Shaji's name in an upcoming interview. This is what Shaji asked for before. However, when Fudge and Dumbledore were about to leave, Shaji said a word that didn't make sense, which made Fudge very puzzled. Master, if you can, please put on your hat later, and be careful of the crows flying in the sky. Shaji was caught by Madame Pomfrey as soon as she finished speaking, in desperation, she had no choice but to be escorted back to the tent to continue resting. Just as Fudge was about to say goodbye to Dumbledore and meet the reporters who were already waiting. Suddenly there was the cry of crows in the sky. Then, Several lumps of white bird droppings fell on Fudge's bald head. Fudge and Dumbledore glanced at each other, both remembering Shaji's parting words just now. Wear a hat and watch out for crows flying by. Dumbledore smiled and sighed, Shaji always surprises me, so he also has the extremely rare talent of prophecy. That's right, that's right, Fudge cast a cleansing spell on his bald head. Look a little excited. It has been many years since there has been a wizard with the gift of a prophet in the wizarding world. He decided that he must make friends with Sha Ji in the future, and knowing a prophet will definitely be of great benefit to his political career. Fortunately, the first impression I left on that child today was not bad. Dumbledore pulled Fudge and told him not to tell Sha Ji's prophecy ability. Fudge nodded to show that he understood that Sha Ji hadn't grown up after all, and it was also for his safety. In fact, just when Sha Ji was shaking hands with Fudge, some images of Fudge being hit on the forehead by bird dropping suddenly flashed in his mind. 
This kind of ability to touch others and then appear the prophecy screen only appeared after prophecy proficiency plus 3. However, this ability is uncontrollable and will only appear randomly. Fortunately, this ability is uncontrollable, so there is no price for making such predictions. And after seeing the picture of Fudge being hit by bird droppings, the words told him, although it was a temporary decision, were also intentional by Sha Ji. The purpose is to show off his prophecy talent in front of Dumbledore. In this way, even if I spoil some things in advance in the future, I can get a reasonable explanation. As for whether the matter of her prophecy talent will be spread, Shaji believes that Dumbledore will handle it well. But even if it is spread, there is nothing. There are really not many people who can beat Shaji now. In the days to come, Shaji will only become stronger and stronger. Shaji was dragged back to the tent this time, and was suppressed by Madame Pomfrey for a whole night. Shaji was not allowed to leave the tent until Dumbledore came early the next morning. Now all the remaining curses on his body have been removed, and the rest is to rest and recuperate. What happened in the past six months made Shaji's body weak to the extreme. If it wasn't for the time when the System Plus 9 power was strengthened, Shaji would have collapsed a long time ago. Dumbledore lowered his head and said to Shaji with some seriousness, it is best not to let too many people know that you have the talent of prophecy. There are many people who covet this ability. If too many people know, you will become very not safe. Shaji nodded, he didn't intend to talk nonsense, he just wanted to let Dumbledore know that he had this ability. Well, your friend Miss Cassian Della has owled me many times. Dumbledore smiled, she wants to invite you to her family's manor to recuperate. A. Shaji actually wanted to refuse, he still has a lot of things to do. For example, take the gold obtained from the Philosopher's Stone to Gringotts and exchange it for a lot of galleons. Yes, for another example, to buy a magic wand that really belongs to you. Moreover, when he lives in a girl's house, he always feels ashamed as if he wants to eat soft food. I suggest you agree. The Whirly family has a long history. I heard that their family has a holiday estate and even has a library with a very rich collection of books. Shaji's eyes lit up immediately, if you talk about the library, I won't be sleepy. Now Shaji's strength is already very strong, but the method is still too simple. When encountering wizards at the level of Dumbledore or Voldemort, his too simple attack method can be easily resolved. Although the rewards of the system are generous, there is too much randomness after all. And if there is a magic library in front of him, he can use his godlike learning ability to become stronger himself. Besides, Kashan Della will be very unhappy if she refuses. Seeing that Shaji agreed, Dumbledore immediately took out a tattered boot from his bosom. Then he took out a pocket watch and looked at the time, the time is just right. Shaji, put your hands on these boots. Shaji recognized it as a portkey, but he still pretended to be puzzled and grabbed the other side of the broken boot. Because the current Shaji should not recognize the portkey. Whoosh. As soon as Shaji's hand touched the broken boot, he felt like his belly button was caught by a hook, and he was pulling forward frantically. This is too uncomfortable. Fortunately, this experience did not last long. Plop. Unprepared, Shaji just sat down on the ground. Dumbledore pulled Shaji up and cast a cleansing charm on Shaji, cleaning all the dirt off his body. We can only get here this way, because I haven't been to the Whirly family's vacation estate. Otherwise we could apparate over. Shaji rubbed her butt, stood up with a grin, and was immediately taken aback by the huge manor in front of her. Is this just the vacation estate of Kashan Della's family? Oh, at first I heard that they wanted to take you back to their family, but Miss Cassandella insisted on taking you to the best manor in their family for recuperation. Dumbledore's tone was a little cheerful, looking at Shaji with a little embarrassment, don't be embarrassed, kid, go, Cassandella is waiting for you. Then, what about the professor? Oh, I still have some things to do, I have to leave first. You can rest well, and you can read more books during your recuperation. Dumbledore blinked at Shaji, and disappeared on the spot with a, pop. Apparently, Dumbledore hinted at Shaji again that he could learn a lot from the library here. As soon as Shaji approached the big manor, he was only shocked at first sight. After all, he owns the Philosopher's Stone, and his wealth is almost endless. If necessary, he can also build such a manor. Crack, 
With a crisp sound, a small figure appeared in front of Sha Ji. Sha Ji looked down, it was a very clean house elf. My name is Cafe, and I'm the house elf of the Whirly family. Excuse me, my honorable gentleman, are you Mr. Sha Ji? I'm Sha Ji. Oh, Mr. Sha Ji, please, my lady has been waiting for you for a long time. Ah, Cafe is really thankful to Mr. Sha Ji for saving Miss Cassandella. The elf babbled while leading Sha Ji talking, I've heard it all, oh my god, Marcus actually used the death curse on the lady. If Mr. Sha Ji hadn't helped Miss Kashandela block the death curse. Oh, my god, Mr. Sha Ji is so great, Cafe said, almost crying on the spot. A, hey, Sha Ji didn't know what to say. Here we are, sir. Miss Cassandella is in the pavilion ahead. Sha Ji could already see the emerald green figure in the pavilion. Thank you, Sha Ji acknowledged her thanks. Oh, the honorable, great Mr. Sha Ji actually said thank you to Cafe. Mr. Sha Ji is so kind. Cafe couldn't hold back anymore this time, and was so moved that he burst into tears. Well, according to Sha Ji, he's really not very good at communicating with house elves. The moment Kashan Della saw Sha Ji, a look of joy flashed across her face. HMPH, do you know how long I've been waiting for you, and I'm only here now. I had some checks from the therapist at the camp, so I just rested there overnight, Sha Ji explained. Let's go, I'll take you to meet my parents. Kashan Della didn't hold back after all, she pulled Sha Ji with a smile on her face, and ran a long way. Kashan Della's father, Nock Whirly, and mother, Elena Russell. When I saw Sha Ji, I showed great enthusiasm. Because of this boy, their precious daughter came home unscathed and smiling more often than ever before. I have to say that Mr. and Mrs. Wally's first impressions of Sha Ji were very good. Although his clothes are old, they are very clean. Although his hair is a little messy, it matches his unique and very close temperament. Especially his smile was so clean that the Whirlies felt heartache and pity. It is such a big boy who can still have such a smile after suffering for so long, which cannot be simply described by the word strong. On top of that, the boy also saved their daughter from a killing curse that would have killed him if the spell hadn't hit the iron cauldron right behind him. What a great character it is to make such a self-sacrificing act. That night, Shaji and Cassandella's family had a sumptuous dinner together. During this time, Shaji once again displayed his acting skills at the level of a movie star, and with the blessing of plus one-o -oh charm, he successfully won the favor of everyone in the Whirly family. The house elf Kaffee was even moved to tears several times. That night, Shaji stayed at Kashan Della's manor. After saying goodnight to Kashan Della, Shaji closed the door. Looking at the beautiful bedroom in front of her, Shaji felt very familiar. Isn't this the bedroom she saw when she made a prophecy to Nagini? Sitting at his desk, Shaji picked up a small piece of ordinary pebbles and started his processing. Under Shaji's control, the black silent mist turned into a very small carving knife that cuts iron like mud. After the stone chips flew, there was only a small piece of stone left on the table. Shaji carefully drilled a hole in the middle. Finally, he took out the philosopher's stone and tapped it lightly on the small piece of stone. The off-white stone instantly turned into gold. Shaji showed joy on his face, then took out his wand, and cast the untraceable stretching charm into the small hole on the small piece of gold. Gold's magic is very adaptable, and Shaji's spell fell on it and took effect easily. In the hole on that small piece of gold, the internal space is constantly expanding. Although, the smaller the body of the object casted with the traceless stretching spell, the more difficult it is to cast the spell. But Shaji has the great magician template, and also has a full-level traceless stretching spell, so this most difficult step is actually the easiest step for Shaji. After checking that there was enough space in the gold piece to accommodate Nagini, Shaji used a magic spell to glue the piece of gold to the Nagini ring. A faint light flickered, the ring disappeared, and even the small piece of gold on it disappeared completely. Shaji was very happy, maybe, I can make a few of these rings as gifts. After all, few people could cast the no-trace stretching charm on a small ring like him, and it could expand to such a large space. So there is no ring on the market that can store items. What if I make a storage ring for Kashandela? She should like it, right? Hiss. Nagini, I have a new place for you, come out. 
Nagini crawled out of the pocket of Shaji's old jacket. Shaji stretched out his hand, revealing the ring on his hand. On the ring, the small piece of gold glued by Shaji suddenly gave off a faint light. A light curtain like water waves appeared in front of the ring. Nagini crawled over, and after passing through the light curtain, his huge body did not appear from the other side. Shaji only knew that Nagini entered the small hole on the ring through this light curtain. Shaji nodded in satisfaction. This scene happened to be exactly what he saw in the prophecy. It's really amazing. If he hadn't made a prophecy at the time, he would never have thought of giving Nagini in a home on the ring. But after reading the prophecy, it made him contribute to the realization of the prophecy. This ring should be regarded as the key item to change one of Nagini's countless fate lines. Shaji continued to sit back at the desk and began to make a storage ring for Kashan Della. This is much simpler than before. Shaji controlled the black air carving knife and slowly cut out the prototype of a ring from the remaining stone. Shaji didn't modify the shape too much, but just carved it randomly according to the shape of the Lord of the Rings. Shaji always thought that the Supreme Lord of the Rings was very beautiful. And, it's easy to do. After a long time, Shaji picked up the stone ring in front of her and nodded with satisfaction, the size should be just right. Kassan Della held his hand during the day, and when he went to meet her parents, he measured the size of Kassan Della's fingers by the feel of his hand. Shaji took out the magic stone again, and with a little tap, the ring carved from the stone turned into gold. Shaji polished it for a long time, and then engraved Kashan Della's name on the ring. Then made a small hole in the top. Finally, he cast the untraceable stretching charm in this small hole, and a storage ring was completed. This storage ring was also expanded by Shaji by almost 5 cubic meters. Enough for Kashan Della to store a lot of stuff. A-D-E-R-T-I-S-E-M-E-N-T. -E -E Shaji picked up the finished ring and looked at it carefully under the magic lamp. It has to be said that the ring carved in imitation of the Supreme Lord of the Rings is indeed very beautiful. After lightly injecting magic power, Cassandella's luminous name will appear on the ring. Shaji thinks Kashan Della should like it. After tidying up, Shaji put away the ring, lay down on the soft bed, and soon fell asleep. Early the next morning, as soon as Shaji woke up, Mr. Whirly brought in a street. Mungo's therapist to give Shaji a comprehensive checkup. Although Shaji had been inspected by Madame Pomfrey before, it was the kindness of Cassandella and Mr. Whirly after all. So Shaji couldn't refuse, so she had to let the therapist examine herself. In the end, the therapist said that Shaji's injuries were almost healed, and he had obviously undergone professional treatment. In the end, the healer only left some potions to nourish Shaji's body, and left. After finally waiting for the conscientious therapist to leave, Shaji planned to ask Kashan Della to give the ring, but Mr. Worley walked into Shaji's bedroom first. Mr. Wally looked outside the door vigilantly, and after confirming that there was no one there, he carefully locked the door. Shaji watched these actions of Mr. Wally curiously, not knowing what this gentleman was doing. Mr. Wally stood in front of Shaji's bed, looking at Shaji quietly. Shaji was a little terrified by his gaze. Ah, Mr. Wally, is there anything I can do for you? Shaji asked tentatively. Yes, of course you have something to help me. Mr. Wally looked very excited. He grabbed Shaji's hand. Kassan Della has never cared as much about anyone as she does about you. Yes, don't be surprised, including me. Mr. Worley smiled wryly. Ah, this, Shaji didn't know what to say for a while. Ah, Kashan Della was the most clingy to her father when she was a child, but. But as she grew up, she and her father had. Mr. Worley looked at Shaji sincerely, so, can you tell me, what should I do to make Kashan Della stick to me like she was when I was a child? Kashan Della treats you differently, you must have some special method. Well, Shaji understands that Mr. Worley seems to be feeling anxious about the increasingly estranged relationship between his daughter and himself, and even came to ask himself as an outsider. But what can Shaji do? Even if there were, it wouldn't suit Mr. Wally. Kashan Della is actually a very proud girl. She always has a condescending attitude towards people who are inferior to her, because she thinks that people who are weaker than her are never the same as her. I am stronger than you, so naturally I should be higher than you. This is her consistent attitude idea. However, when she met Shaji, 
Shaji severely thwarted her in her proudest gift of magic. This made her recognize Shaji's excellence and pulled Shaji to an equal status with herself. Strictly speaking, it was from that moment that Shaji was qualified to be friends with her. Moreover, Shaji has a charm of up to 10 points, which also greatly increases Kashan Della's favorability. In the end, Shaji helped her block the deadly killing curse, which deeply moved her. The combination of many factors has made Shaji's image in Karshan Della very special. He is better than her, handsome, and the most important thing is to treat her very well, so good that he can block the death curse for him. These experiences deeply shook her already lonely heart. So even though Kashan Della has only known Shaji for a short time, she still cares for Shaji very much. Not even that kind of arrogance. But these cannot be reproduced in Mr. Wally. Shaji pondered for a moment, do you still remember when Cassandella became unfamiliar with you? Mr. Worley thought about it carefully, well, it seems to be five years ago. So, what were you busy with? I remember this. I happened to be busy with a very important investment that year, so. Mr. Wally suddenly paused, you mean? Yes, Mr. Worley, the reason Cassandella is estranged from you is because you are too busy to spend time with her. Shaji shrugged. Cassandella used to be with her made the time as much more than the time with you. In her growth, you are missing. I can't make Cassandella stick to you like before, but believe me, Mr. Worley, if you can put down part of your work and spend more time with her, even if she resists at first, but as time goes by, she I will slowly accept you again and get close to you. Ah, so that's how it is. I should have thought of it a long time ago. If it wasn't because I didn't have time to accompany her, she wouldn't have been tricked into Albania by that Marcus. Ah, I should have known oh. Dot why was I busy with other things at the time? I regret it. If I had spent more time with her, she would still be as clingy to me now as before. Thank you, Shaji. Mr. Worley lost his mind leaving Shaji's bedroom without hesitation. Shaji got up and stretched her muscles, ready to find Kashan Della. Unexpectedly, at this time, Kashan Della had already arrived. She walked into Shah Ji's bedroom suspiciously. What did you do to my dad? Why did he keep crying and saying sorry to me after he left you? Naturally, Shah Ji couldn't tell the truth to Kashan Della. Even if he wants to say it, it shouldn't be him, otherwise, according to Cassie Della's character, Mr. Worley's next actions will easily have the opposite effect. Oh, Mr. Wally just told me about our experience in Albania. After listening to it, he felt very guilty. Kashan Della pursed her lips and said nothing. But Shaji understood that her father was crying and apologizing to herself. For Kashan Della, this is still a big touch. Can you go out for a walk with me? Shaji smiled, the therapist said, I should go out more often. Okay, it just so happens that I can show you around my family's manor. Seeing Kashan Della return to her smile, Shaji also laughed and he suddenly felt that it would be a good thing to stay in Kashan Della's manor to recuperate. The manor of Kashan Della's family is indeed very large. Shaji and Kashan Della walked together for a long time, but they didn't fully visit it. Finally, they walked into the pavilion where Kashan Della greeted Shaji in the first place. Kashan Della sat dignifiedly opposite Shaji, she picked up the teapot and poured a cup of tea for herself and Shaji. Shaji took out the ring she had prepared a long time ago and handed it to Kashan Della, I made this last night, and it's for you. Kashan Della looked at the ring in front of her in a daze, and then stared at the ring in a daze, obviously not yet recovered. Seeing that Kashan Della didn't respond, Shaji grabbed her little hand and put the ring on for her. The size is just right, as expected of me, the measurement is so accurate. Shaji is secretly proud of herself. Kashan Della looked at the ring on her finger. This ring is so beautiful. The moment her finger touched the ring, a line of luminous letters suddenly appeared on the ring, which was Kashan Della's name. Seeing this scene, Kashan Della's eyes glowed with brilliance. Did you do this yourself? Of course. Every line on the ring was polished by myself, and every letter on it was carved by myself. Shaji said proudly. Before he started, he really didn't know that his manual work was so good. Kashan Della looked at the ring on her finger, and the more she looked at it, the more she liked it. He made it himself, it has my name on it, and the ring fits my aesthetic perfectly. Wait. Kashan Della quickly realized one thing. 
What? This idiot, does he know what it means to give a girl a ring? And, he even put it on for me himself. I haven't said no yet. With just one swipe, Kashan Della's face turned red. You. Dot you. Dot why did you suddenly give me a ring? Cassandella stuttered in embarrassment. Shaji was slightly taken aback, don't you like it? I thought you would like it. Kashan Della's face turned even redder, and she even felt steam rising from the top of her head. Say you don't like it. Dot but I really like it. Do you like it? Doesn't saying that you like it mean you accept it. But why did I ask him to help me put on the ring just now? Shaji was still talking about his process of making the ring, and then he found that Kashandela in front of him ran away. Turn around and run, run fast. Shaji also seems to be seeing steam from the top of her head. Ah, shame to death, this bad guy. Shaji was stunned behind, completely unaware of what happened. What's wrong? I haven't told her yet, this is a storage ring. Ding. It's not unreasonable for the host to be single for 30 years in his previous life. The system shows mercy and rewards skill points plus one. What nonsense, it's just a storage ring, does she still think it's an engagement ring? You're really laughing at me. Ding, but the host hasn't said it's a storage ring yet. Ah, ah this, Shaji finally realized, so she thought it was an engagement ring. So she ran away shyly. At this time, a small figure appeared behind the pillar, looking at Shaji with reverence on his face. Oh, the Honorable Mr. Shaji actually proposed to Ms. Kashandela. Mr. Shaji also put an engagement ring on Ms. Kashandela, and Ms. Kashandela did not refuse. Great, I have to report to the master this is good news. Shaji turned around with a face full of horror, and then saw the house elf Kaffi snapped her fingers and disappeared in place. Chow Do is stunned. Wait a minute, there is a misunderstanding. Shaji only looked at the direction where Cafe, who had disappeared a long time ago, was in the direction just now, and all thoughts in her heart were lost. This is too bad. He really didn't expect that giving a ring would cause such a big misunderstanding. Ding, does the host have nothing to miss in this world? The system continued to block Shaji. Dot dot dot. Mr. Worley has wiped away his tears at this time, he is writing a letter, and he is explaining the next work, because he decided to put down the busy work and spend time with his daughter. Shaji knew that this young man was very good, and thanks to his reminder, I knew what I should do next. Mr. Wally has already made a plan, as long as he starts to do it today, then he is very confident that he can regain the closeness of his daughter. Crack, Cafe's figure appeared in front of Mr. Wally. Master, Cafe's shrill voice was full of joy. Mr. Shaji and Miss Kashandela were resting in the gazebo just now. Oh, okay, Shaji should go out for a walk more often, it will be very helpful for his recuperation. Mr. Wally nodded. Then Mr. Shaji gave Miss Kashandela a gift. Really, what's the gift? Mr. Wally picked up the teacup and took a sip of tea. It's an engagement ring, master. And Mr. Shaji personally put it on for Miss Kashandela, and Miss Kashandela didn't refuse. She ran back happily, Cafe said excitedly. PFF'd, Mr. Wally couldn't help but spit out a mouthful of tea, spraying Cafe all over his head and face. What did you say? Shaji just proposed to my daughter, and my daughter agreed. Mr. Wally almost jumped up. Mr. Wally slumped in his chair as if he had lost all his strength. Oh, Merlin's beard, how can this be, they're only eleven years old. And, I haven't mended Cassandella, is she going to run off with someone else? Oh, no. Cafe looked at his master with an innocent face. Isn't this a good thing? Why is the master so sad? Mr. Worley sat slumped on a chair, his eyes glazed over, looking up at the sky, and he kept muttering to himself. I thought it would take ten years for this day to come. Merlin's beard. Dot she is only eleven years old. Is it because she hates me as a father, so she is in a hurry to leave this house? Oh, I my heart is going to break. Ah, of course, of course, Shaji is just a good boy, with great talent, even Dumbledore is full of praise, and he has a good character, and he looks even better. Although he has no assets now, we have the support of our family, it's not a problem, but they're only eleven years old, they haven't even started Hogwarts yet. If Elena knew, what would she say? Cafe was terrified by the owner of her thoughts, and looked at Mr. Worley's thoughts, looking at a loss. 
Until he heard Mr. Wally's last words, its big eyes were suddenly full of surprise. Yeah, what will the hostess say? Cafe has to find the hostess. Tell her the good news. Ah, Cafe is really a stupid elf, Cafe should have thought of it earlier. The elf snapped his fingers and disappeared into Mr. Wally's study. Elena Rosso, aka Mrs. Whirly, is in Dumbledore's office at Hogwarts. One of the businesses of the Whirly family is the trade of rare herbs. Originally, Mrs. Whirly came to Hogwarts this time to discuss with Professor Sprout about the cultivation of some rare plants. When he was about to leave, he happened to meet Dumbledore, and Dumbledore was very concerned about Shaji's current situation, so he invited her to the principal's office. Then Cafe, the reckless little elf, just broke in. Kaffee, I remember that I taught you etiquette, don't just barge in without saying hello when others are talking. Mrs. Wally's tone was a little harsh. Cafe was so frightened that his head shrank, and then he lay on the ground, hitting the floor with his head, oh, yes, the hostess is right, bad cafe. Bad cafe, bad cafe should be good punish yourself. Okay, Elena frowned and prevented cafe from punishing herself, so, is there something important for you to break in like this? Cafe stood up again and hit her big head continuously. Now she is a little dizzy. However, this did not prevent her from excitedly reporting the good news to her mistress. That's right, Miss Kashan Della accepted the marriage proposal of the honorable and great Mr. Shah Ji just now. Now the master is crying with joy in his study after hearing the news. Cafe thinks it should be at the same time, tell the good news to the hostess. What? Mrs. Wally was full of disbelief. However, her disbelief was different from Mr. Wally's. He was not surprised by Shaji's marriage proposal. After all, he knew how beautiful his daughter was, and no little boy could can't resist her charm. The incredible thing about her is that Cassandella accepted it. His proud, conceited daughter actually accepted it. Yes, yes, Cafe danced excitedly. Cafe saw with his own eyes that Mr. Shaji put a ring on Ms. Kashandella, and Ms. Kashandella didn't refuse. What did Nanok say? Mrs. Wally suppressed the shock in her heart. Oh, Cafe heard from the master that Mr. Shaji is a good boy with great talent. Even the great headmaster Dumbledore is full of praise. He has a good personality and looks even better. No problem, Cafe said sharply. If Mr. Wally were here, he would definitely want to strangle this elf with his own hands. Spread a word, spread it thinly. Professor Dumbledore, I think I have to leave for a while. Mrs. Worley said goodbye decisively. She had to go back and ask Kashandela what was going on. Dumbledore was also shocked, the kid who was only 11 years old actually proposed to marry him. He felt that he should persuade Shaji, and he was obliged to tell him that at Hogwarts, the school rules did not object to falling in love. Marriage proposal or something, in fact, can be delayed by a few years, and it is indeed a little early now. Dot dot dot. Distraught, Mr. Whirly came to Kashan Della's bedroom door, which was tightly shut. And Kashan Della is shrinking in the bed, her face is flushed, but she has no intention of taking off the ring on her finger. She hid under the blanket, staring at her shimmering name on the ring in a daze. Sometimes smiling, sometimes annoyed. How could he be in such a hurry to propose? We can actually try to have a secret relationship first. What would your parents think if they knew about it? Fortunately, they don't know. As soon as she thought of this, she heard her father's voice coming in from outside the door. Cassandella, did you really wear Shaji's ring and accept his proposal? Ah, that bad guy, running to tell my dad so soon. Cassandella was so annoyed that she almost wanted to cast a crushing spell on the floor, so that she could blow a big hole and hide deep in it. Cassandella's mind was revealed, and she, who was already ashamed and angry, subconsciously wanted her father to leave quickly and stop asking her, because it was really embarrassing. But after blurting out, it became, this has nothing to do with you. Don't bother me. Crack. Mr. Wally only felt that his fragile heart had been hit by 10,000 critical points. Woo, is she really tired of my father? She actually said that it has nothing to do with me. Ah, I regret it. I wish I could have spent more time with her. Chapter 31 Shaji came to Mr. Wally's study door, saying that she wanted to explain to Mr. Wally, after all, her original intention was to give a friend a magic item. 
but he didn't know the house elf's communication skills, it was very fragmented, and he forcibly gave the matter of his marriage proposal a whole stone hammer. Now, Mrs. Wally is rushing back home, while Mr. Wally took out the good wine he had collected for many years and began to drink away his sorrow. Standing at the door of Mr. Worley's study, Shaw's face was flushed, as if she wanted to enter but dared not. The system laughed and let out a pig cry. Ding, no wonder the host was single for thirty years in his previous life. You are enough. Ding, the mission is released, please the host to clear up the misunderstanding without reducing the favorability of the Worley family. A random treasure chest will be rewarded. The items are skills that can be obtained from this treasure box or not limited to this world. Will the host accept the mission? The system then it started to mess up on one side. I accept. Unexpectedly, Shaji accepted the task in seconds, and then a tricky smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Ding, take the task in seconds. Is your embarrassment all fake? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm just waiting for you to release the task. Shaji smiled confidently, I can solve this matter, but there is no reward for solving it this way, so I pretended to be embarrassed. In fact, I have already solved it. I have figured out you, as long as it is something that makes you feel very interesting, there is a high probability that you will temporarily issue tasks to lure me to do things I don't want to do. And the rewards must be very good. Ding, it's true that I didn't intend to send out the task this time. I sent the task temporarily just to see you suffer. HMPH, you tricked me. But don't be complacent, let's talk about it after the problem is really solved. What's so difficult about this? Believe it or not, if I go in and explain directly to Mr. Worley, the misunderstanding can be resolved directly. Ding, makes sense, I was deceived by you again. However, in that case, Cassandella will have to be angry with me. So, this is not the best way. The best way is that I don't know anything. Shaji smiled slightly, turned around and left, scooped up two pebbles on the ground, and walked straight into the library of the Worley family. The library of the Wally family has long been open to Shaji, and he can enter it to read books at any time. Ding, what is the host going to do? Read a book. Dot dot dot. When Mrs. Wally came back, she saw Mr. Wally who was drowning his sorrows with alcohol, and his nose was almost crooked. She pinched Mr. Worley's ear, what's going on with your daughter? I heard that you are still crying with joy. Mr. Worley wept, happy, oh, Merlin's beard, I've never been so sad in my life. I asked her just now, but she said it was none of my business, and told me to leave her alone. Oh, Elena, our daughter must be tired of this family, that's why she's in a hurry to get married. How did you ask? Mr. Worley told what happened just now, and then Mrs. Worley complained a lot, if you ask me like this, I would have to let you go away. After all, Cassandella is still a little girl. How can you not be shy about things? It's no wonder she's willing to see you if you ask so directly. Quote. Mrs. Worley came to Cassandella's bedroom door. Mr. Wally followed his wife silently. Cassandella, it's mom, can you open the door? Mom. Cassandella's tone was a little panicked, but after a while, Cassandella still opened the door. What is our little lady hiding in her bedroom in broad daylight? It's nothing. I suddenly feel a little uncomfortable, and I just want to take a rest. Kashan Della's eyes dodged. Oh, I heard that Shaji sent you a delicate little gift, may I have a look? Madam Worley asked. Maybe it's because she didn't mention any marriage proposals, engagement rings, etc., so Kashan Della's mood gradually stabilized. After hesitating for a moment, she took off the ring that was still on her right ring finger. When Kashan Della's finger touched the ring, Cashandella's name appeared on the ring. Mr. Worley watched, lamenting in his heart, hey, she must have agreed, otherwise she wouldn't have been wearing it all the time, and as soon as she touched it, Cassandella's name appeared on the ring. Isn't this a wedding ring? There is such magic on the wedding rings of myself and my wife. Mrs. Worley took the ring in her hand and looked at it carefully. When the ring was in her hand, the name of Cashandella would not emerge, as if the ring had recognized the magic power of Cashandella. What a beautiful ring, Mrs. Worley sighed. Cashandella looked at the ring helplessly, as if she was afraid that her mother would not return the ring to her. Cassandella, I think you should know what it means for a boy to give a ring to a girl, and what does it mean for a girl to let a boy wear a ring for herself? 
Suddenly, a straight ball came. Kashan Della's face turned red, what does it represent? I don't understand, I don't know, this is just an ordinary gift. No matter what you say, I will never admit it. Hum, this ring looks handmade, Shaji must have put a lot of thought into it. Let's thank him together. Mrs. Worley leaned closer to Kashan Della's small face. Kashan Della's face was flushed, her eyes dodged. Are you going to meet the bad guy now? God, can I not go? Kassan Della, what's wrong with you, are you afraid of seeing Shaji? I'm not afraid, just go. In the library, Shaji pretended to be looking at a very thick magic book. He maintained this state until the three members of Cassandella's family came to him. The crisis alert talent has not been triggered, um, we can talk. Shaji looked up belatedly, and stood up quickly after seeing a family of three coming in front of him. Mr. Worley, thank you very much for your generosity to open the library for me. The collection of books here is really rich. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Wally greeted in a low voice, his eyes wandering to his wife involuntarily. Mrs. Worley stepped forward, holding Kashan Della's ring in her hand, and was about to ask Shaji if she really proposed to marry her with the ring. Before she could speak, Shaji spoke first. Ah, yes, I almost forgot. Shaji took out an equally delicate ring from her pocket and handed it to Mrs. Worley, thank you very much for taking care of me, I have never felt like this in my life the warmth. So, I made some gifts with my own hands, and I want to repay you, although the value is not high, it also represents a trace of my heart. Shaji's operation directly stunned the three people on the opposite side. Mrs. Worley said hesitantly, you gave this to me. Yes, Shaji looked at Mrs. Worley calmly, her eyes were extremely innocent. If Shaji was four or five years older, Mr. Wally would have to rush over and throw him out of the manor. What's the matter, do you kid not even let your mother-in-law go? How dare you give a ring to your mother-in-law in front of your father-in-law? Then Shaji took out another exquisite ring, and handed it to Mr. Wally, this one is for you. Thanks to Mr. Worley, you generously opened the library for me, so I saw an interesting spell in this book, the traceless stretching spell. Seeing that the three people in front were all in a daze, Shaji just picked up the ring that Mr. Worley didn't take, and touched the thick book in front of her lightly, and then the book disappeared on the desk. Merlin's beard, you managed to cast the untraceable stretching curse on the ring. Did you really learn this spell just now? Mr. Worley was extremely surprised. It's not that no one has tried to cast the traceless stretching spell in this kind of small jewelry, but most of them have failed. Even if they succeed, they can only open up a small space, and they can't even fit a watch. But Shaji's ring can directly store such a big book in it. Mr. Worley took the ring from Shaji's hand, and after examining it carefully, he discovered the hidden hole on it. He carefully probed it with magic power. Running Gorgon, there's enough room for a fireplace. Mrs. Worley approached Shaji and said, so these three rings were all modified by you with a traceless stretching spell. Shaji took a step back subconsciously. Mrs. Worley looked very similar to Cassandella, just like an enlarged version of Cassiandella, full of queen power. It's so stressful to come together like this. Shaji nodded hastily, yes, I gave Cassandella the ring that belonged to her today, but she ran away before I could tell her that it was a storage ring. At this time, Kashan Della reacted the most, she said angrily, so you gave me a ring, it's not for. Um. Dot for what? Then Cassandella blushed again. Mrs. Worley's emerald green pupils stared directly at Shaji's eyes, so, you don't know what it means to give a girl a ring. Shaji acted terrified like a child who didn't know what mistake he had made. He swallowed hard and asked, what does it mean? That means the boy is proposing to the girl. Marriage proposal. Oh my god. Shaji's face turned red immediately. I, this. I lost a lot of memories. I can't find this one in my current memory, so. Ah. Dot how could this be? I'm still a child. It turned out to be a misunderstanding. Mr. Wally's mood suddenly changed from cloudy to sunny. Great, my precious daughter won't leave me now. Ahem, thank you very much for your gift, Shaji, but you must remember in the future, don't give rings to girls casually. Mrs. Wally was also a little embarrassed. Yes, Shaji is just a child. How could they preconceive that such a young child would know how to propose marriage? So, Kathy, Mrs. Worley called out. 
The house elf Kaffee appeared in front of Mrs. Wally. It's Kaffee's fault, please punish Kaffee severely, master. Kaffee's ears drooped, his expression was full of disappointment. Is it just a misunderstanding? Oh, obviously Mr. Shaji and Miss Cashandela are so well matched. Shaji said, Ms. Worley, this is actually my fault. I put the ring on Kashandela. My lack of common sense was seen by Cafe, so she thought I was proposing, and she was an elf who cares about her little master very much, that's why she is happy to report to you. I beg you to spare her punishment. Well, since you said so, Mrs. Wally said helplessly. Oh, Mr. Shaji is pleading for Cafe. Mr. Shaji is so great. Woo, Cafe was so moved that he burst into tears. Shaji quickly stopped her, okay, don't cry, can you make me a cup of black tea? Of course, Cafe is going right now. At this time, Kashan Della suddenly turned around and ran away. Seeing this, Shaji hurriedly chased after her. Mrs. Worley said with some anxiety, it's all my fault. I shouldn't have brought Kashan Della here. Now she might be angry with Shaji. What's the little conflict between young people? They will definitely reconcile soon. Mr. Wally is in a good mood because his precious daughter will not get married early, and is currently studying the gift that Shaji gave him. What about the ring? Dot dot dot. Cassandella, where are you going? Shaji quickly caught up with Kashandella and grabbed her arm. Kashandella's eyes were a little red, she struggled to take it off, and said coldly, I'm not feeling well, I need to go back and rest. Let me go. That's right, it's all just a misunderstanding, how could you propose to me? All of this is just my self-indulgence. You are a log, big hard wood. Kashan Della's heart was full of loss, shame, anger, and annoyance. She was actually mad at herself. She knew it was not Shaji's fault. After all, Shaji has lost a lot of memory, and he doesn't know this common sense at all, so how can he be blamed? Kashan Della's arm was only grabbed by Shaji, and after she couldn't break free, she looked at Shaji helplessly. Shaji pulled her right hand, you forgot this. Shaji took the ring and put it on Kashan Della's ring finger again with her own hands. Ah, Kashan Della was stunned, Shaji already knew this common sense this time. Her heart is pounding. Shaji smiled and leaned closer to her ear, and said softly, so, you really really hope this is an engagement ring, right? Ah, you bad fellow. I don't want this to be your engagement ring. I don't like you at all. Kashan Della blushed and ran away. Hey, actually I know she likes me, Shaji said wistfully. Ding. Shocked, the host has finally enlightened, and is no longer a big tree, Yi Qingji. No, I remembered it afterwards. Kashan Della obviously misunderstood my intentions at the time, but she still didn't refuse me to put a ring on her. That's why I boldly infer that she likes me. Shaji smiled wryly and shook shake your head. Before that, I didn't know her intentions at all. So this is liking, but why do they say they don't like it when they obviously like it? Do you know what she said just now, she doesn't like me at all. If it was before, I would take it seriously. Thinking of it this way. Did I miss a lot in my last life? Shaji suddenly felt a little melancholy. Ding. You deserve to be single for 30 years in your last life. Quote dot 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 quote. Ding. Congratulations on successfully completing the mission. You will be rewarded with a random treasure chest. May I ask if you have opened it? Open. Shaji remembered that there was another treasure chest to get. Ding. The treasure chest has been successfully opened. Congratulations to the host for getting Hound Dog Step. Plus one. Ding. It has been detected that this skill comes from another world, and now the system has assimilated it into the magic of the original world. On Shaji's panel, in the column of spells, there is an extra spell of, Hound's Pace. With a thought in Shaji's mind, his figure suddenly disappeared in place and appeared on the ground three meters away. This turned out to be a teleportation magic. You can teleport within any ten meters. He remembered that this was a battle gray skill in a game called Alden's Ring in his previous life. This skill can only be enchanted on weapons. After using it, you can teleport a certain distance in different directions. But now, the, hound dog pace, skill that has been completely assimilated by this world has completely become a magic that anyone can learn. Shaji nodded happily. This hound's pace is different from that of apparition. It can only achieve short distance teleportation, 
but the speed of activation is faster, and there is no danger of separation. If you can skillfully use this magic, then in battle, Shaji can become a ghost that appears behind the enemy at any time. Best of all, this magic can be taught to other wizards. With this magic, the people I cherish in the future will definitely have a lot of protection. Dot dot dot. From this day on, Kashan Della hid from Shaji for several days in a row. However, fortunately, Kashan Della has a strong heart and Shaji has a thick skin, so within a few days, the two can get along as before. Strictly speaking, it is closer than before. In this way, Shaji spent more than half a month in Kashan Della's manor, and his body has fully recovered. During this period, he learned a lot of new magical knowledge in the library of the Wali family. The time came to the end of July. On this day, Shaji bid farewell to Kashan Della's family and was about to leave the manor of Kashan Della's family. Can't you just leave? Although Kashan Della was expressionless, her eyes revealed her inner thoughts. I can't live in your house forever, Kashan Della. Shaji laughed. In Kashan Della's manor, he is just a guest after all, how can there be any reason to live in other people's house all the time? He is not a son-in-law. It's okay, Kashan Della whispered. Mr. Worley smiled and said, We welcome you as a guest anytime, and I believe Kashan Della thinks so too. HMPH, I don't care about this bad guy. Madam Worley touched Cassandella's little head beside her, then looked at Shaji and said, I asked Cafe to take you to Diagon Alley, I believe you should already know something about it by now. Thank you, it was a great help. Shaji bid them farewell politely. Cassandella, come on. Professor Dumbledore said that parting is for a better reunion. We will meet again at Hogwarts, won't we? Kashan Della was silent, subconsciously stroking the ring on her right hand with her left hand. Shaji waved at them, then grabbed Kafei's hand. With a crisp sound of, pa, Shaji and Kafei disappeared in place. HMPH, bad man, if you don't write to me, you're dead. Dot dot dot, crack. Ka Fei and Shaji appeared next to a shop in Diagon Alley. Shaji found that the Phantom's apparition is much more comfortable than the wizard's. I don't know if it is an illusion caused by the side effects of the last prophecy. Mr. Shaji, Kafei sent you here. Please take care of yourself. Kafei will miss you. I'll miss you too, Kafei. Goodbye. Go back and tell Kashan Della, I won't forget to write to her. After Kafei left, Shaji began to look at Diagon Alley. This is very similar to the movie scene in Shaji's impression, except that the streets here are wider and there are more shops around. But one thing is the same, that is, there are really many people. Well, next, I have to go to Gringotts first. Shaji took out a map, identified the direction, and walked towards Gringotts. This is the map of Diagon Alley drawn by Cassandella for him. Look for it against the map, and you won't be afraid of getting lost. After a while, Shaji walked into Gringotts full of anticipation. At this moment, his ring was full of gold bricks. After a while, Shaji walked out of the gate of Gringotts, surrounded by a large group of polite goblins. No way, Shaji is too rich. When those gold bricks were taken out one by one by Shaji, the goblin who received him almost passed out from happiness. By the time Shaji walked out of Gringotts, he had enough galleons in his ring. Shaji took out the admission letter that Dumbledore left for him, and at the back was a list of books and equipment that he needed to buy for school. After Shaji browsed briefly, she decided to buy an owl first. You can't send Cassiandella a letter without an owl. And he thought it would be best to send Cassiandella a letter as soon as he bought the owl. Many times, trust a prophet's intuition. Following the guidance of the map, Shaji stopped in front of a very dark-looking shop. There was a low, soft humming sound from the shop. The sign in front of the door reads, Yil Owl Shop. Shaji walked in with great strides. The shop was also very dark, with many cages lined up on both sides, and inside the cages were all kinds of owls. There are gray owls, grass owls, snowy owls, etc. These owls are of different sizes and sizes, and even their expressions and personalities are also different. As soon as Shaji entered the room, he felt that he was being stared at by countless pairs of eyes. It seemed that the owls in these cages were looking at him. Shaji is sure that these creatures have enough intelligence, because their eyes make them look like they are choosing their own masters. 
A young clerk came over enthusiastically, Hello, do you want to buy owls or owl food? Hello, I want to buy an owl. Of course, I have to buy some owl food. The clerk began to introduce the owls in the cage to Sha Ji. These owls were either strong and huge, or small and exquisite. Some are proud and some are lively. Sha Ji only looked around, and suddenly, his eyes fell on an unusually lively little thing. This is a snowy owl, but its size is much smaller than ordinary snowy owls. This makes it look like a snowball at first glance. That's it, Sha Ji finally got this little snowy owl after paying 20 galleons. It's really expensive, but I'm not short of money now. From now on, you will be called Shuecho, Sha Ji said with a smile. Snowball was bouncing up and down in the cage, very lively, as if impatiently, wanting to fly into the sky. Sha Ji walked out of the owl shop with the cage in hand, then took out a piece of parchment, and tapped her magic wand lightly on the parchment. Lines of words clearly appeared on the parchment, and then disappeared on the parchment. It's a little magic he's been working on with Cassandella. When someone reads a letter written with this kind of magic, they can only see a blank parchment, unless a unique spell is used to reveal the writing on it. Shaji actually didn't want to be so sneaky, but Cassandella always wanted to guard against Mrs. Whirly. Shaji filled a piece of parchment with eloquence, then folded the parchment, let Snowball hold it in his mouth, and finally let it fly into the air. This is actually really amazing, even if you don't say it, they can know who you want to send the letter to. Shaji put the cage into the ring, and then took out the list to study where the next stop should be. Shaji, excuse me, are you Mr. Shaji? Shaji suddenly heard someone calling him, he turned around, and saw a tall witch in emerald green robe smiling at him. And behind this witch stood a couple dressed as muggles, and a little girl with fluffy hair. Good guy, all acquaintances. But now Shaji just shouldn't recognize them. Um, I am, may I ask if you are? Sha Ji asked politely. Hello, Sha Ji, I'm Minerva McGonagall, Professor of Transfiguration at Hogwarts. I've been hearing Dumbledore mentioning you, and he's full of praise for your transfiguration talent. To be honest, I haven't heard from you for a long time. He praised a little wizard so much. Professor McGonagall looked at Sha Ji with a smile. Sha Ji blushed and said embarrassedly, Professor Dumbledore praised you, but Professor Dumbledore told me that you are the best transfiguration master, and I will learn more advanced transfiguration from you at Hogwarts Technique. Professor McGonagall had indeed heard from Dumbledore that a young wizard with an outstanding talent for transfiguration would be enrolled this year. Dumbledore told her that Sha Ji always has a unique aura that makes people feel close, and that as long as he meets him, he can be recognized in the crowd. At first, Professor McGonagall was a little bit incredulous, but just now, as soon as she took the Grangers and their daughter into Diagon Alley, she saw the big boy frowning at a list. That unique temperament, even in Diagon Alley where people come and go, also catches Professor McGonagall's attention at a glance. Although he simply stood there, he always gave people a feeling of standing out from the crowd. So Professor McGonagall guessed that he was Shaji, so he stepped forward to ask. It turned out to be the case. Professor McGonagall, where are you going? I am guiding Miss Granger and her parents to Diagon Alley to buy the items needed for school. By the way, this is Hermione Granger, and you will become classmates this year. Professor McGonagall introduced the Granger couple in the future to Sha Ji Miss Know It All. Sha Ji shook hands with them one by one, yes, it's the movie version of Hermione. But Sha Ji remained calm on the surface. I'm now planning to lead them to Gringotts and exchange them for galleons. Professor McGonagall was about to bid farewell to Sha Ji before continuing with today's guiding mission. Exchange for galleons, Sha Ji pondered for a while, as far as I know, there is a limit to the exchange of muggle currency for galleons in Gringotts, and there are not many galleons that can be exchanged. Otherwise, well, I just came out of Gringotts, and I'm trying to exchange some muggle currency, or I'll exchange it with Mr. Granger, there's no limit here. Sha Ji really planned to buy a wave in the muggle world in the future, and he really planned to exchange some British pounds. Instead of getting cheaper for those goblins, he might as well exchange them with Mr. Granger. Because Professor McGonagall is here, the Grangers are not afraid that Sha Ji will deceive them. Of course, but how much wizarding world currency can you exchange here? Mr. Granger asked. 
he actually didn't expect how many galleons he could exchange with a big boy like Sha Ji. Sha Ji smiled, how many pounds did you bring? About a thousand pounds. Mr. Granger produced a stack of notes and counted them. Okay, I want them all. This is 200 galleons. Sha Ji directly took out a money bag. The exchange rate between gold galleon and British pound is roughly one gold galleon equals five pounds. This kind of money bag is produced by Gringotts, and it has been cast with the no trace stretching charm, and one can hold many galleons. Oh, boy, can you tell me where you got all this money? Professor McGonagall couldn't help asking. 200 gold galleons is a lot, which obviously shouldn't be something that a child like Shah Ji can afford. Actually, I have a pet. Dumbledore knows it too. Its venom can sell for 500 galleons per ounce. Shah Ji didn't lie this time either, he really took Nagini's venom to Mrs. Worley asked about the price. After professional testing, it is indeed the price. Therefore, even if Shah Ji didn't have the Philosopher's Stone, she would not be short of galleons, so she never concealed her wealth. After all, Nagini's venom can be stored in buckets with him. Shah Ji was about to say goodbye to Professor McGonagall. He has already decided where to go next. Shah Ji now wants to buy a magic wand that is truly her own. The one in his hand is obtained from the capture of the werewolf wizard. Although he has surrendered to him, he just wants to buy a new one. Why not buy a new one if you have the money? After hearing Shah Ji's plan, Professor McGonagall smiled, in fact, Mr. Granger has enough galleons now that he doesn't need to go to Gringotts. And we just want to buy a set for Miss Granger now. A new wand. Then let's go together, we can discuss transfiguration with you. Shah Ji said it doesn't matter. After more than half a month of study in the library of the Wally family, Shah Ji's transfiguration mastery has reached five points. This was achieved entirely by himself, without using the system's skill points. There is no way, Shah Ji with ten points of intelligence, when studying, he is like a god of learning, no different from cheating. Along the way, Shah Ji was exchanging experience with Professor McGonagall on transfiguration. Although Hermione Granger hadn't spoken much, she had been paying attention to this boy who was about her age. He seemed to know a lot about the wizarding world, maybe a young wizard from a wizarding family. Listening to Shah Ji and Professor McGonagall discussing Gamp's basic deformation law along the way, and what are the five exceptions to Gamp's deformation law. Hermione Granger was at a loss when she heard these inexplicable words, she had no idea what they were talking about. For Hermione, who has always been a top student, this is incredible. She secretly made up her mind that when she bought new textbooks, she must memorize them all. Next time she will have a laugh with Professor McGonagall like this. The little girl's comparison mentality rose instantly. It seems that you have learned a lot during the period of recuperation in the Whirly family. I don't think I may have anything to teach you anymore. Professor McGonagall sighed. She had never met a little wizard of her age who could discuss transfiguration with her to such a profound extent. Professor McGonagall, your praise is too much, I am blushing. Finally, Ollivander's wand shop arrived. The shop front of the wand shop looked small and dilapidated, even the gold lettering on the door was peeled off. The sign reads, Ollivander, crafted wands since 382 BC. Shah Ji felt that with this storefront alone, if Diagon Alley didn't have a second wand shop as a competitor, this wand shop might have closed down long ago. However, it is also possible that Ollivander kept the dilapidated signboard as a reminder of his long history of wand-making skills. Ding Ling! Shah Ji opened the store door and let Professor McGonagall and the others in. The shop was also very narrow, and it became more obvious after Shah Ji and the five of them entered. Shah Ji sat on the bench, scanning the thousands of wand boxes in the wand shop. Very good, through the wand box, Shah Ji can also see the attribute panels of those wands. He glanced at the wands on the shelf, trying to find a wand that was 100% suitable for him. Good afternoon, the soft voice suddenly appeared, startling the Granger family who were looking around. Oh, Professor McGonagall, long time no see, fur, nine and a half inches, dragon heartstring, unbendable, right. This is a good wand for transfiguration. An old man suddenly appeared in front of the counter, a pair of very light-colored eyes, looked at Hermione and Shaji who was sitting on the bench. This old man should be Ollivander. Yes, long time no see. 
This time I brought my students to buy wands. Oh, then, these two young wizards are the ones who bought the wand. Ollivander looked between Shaji and Hermione. So, which of you will come first? Shaji said, ladies first. He is still looking for a wand with a better fit. He wasn't sure that the wand Ollivander had chosen would be a better fit for him than his current one. One must know that the magic wand of the werewolf wizard has a fit rate of 91% with him, which is considered very high. But since you want to buy a new one, it is natural to buy one that is more suitable for you. On the other side, Ollivander had already begun to measure Hermione with an automatic tape measure. Then, after trying several wands, Hermione finally got hers. When she waved that wand, the tip of the wand emitted streamers of light. Vine wood, ten and a quarter inches, with a dragon heartstring core, very springy. Same as the original, nothing has changed. Then it is the gentleman's turn. Shaji stood up and came to the counter. Which is your dominant hand? Right hand. The automatic tape measure started working again. Shaji guessed that the function of this measuring tape was to narrow down the search range of the wand, otherwise, there would be thousands of wands in the wand shop. It was not easy for Ollivander to find the right wand. Come on, try this one. Ollivander took a red-brown wand and handed it to Shaji. Shaji looked down. The faceplate of the wand appeared in front of him. Item. Wand. Wand body. Platinum. Wand core. Dragon heartstring. Length. 10 one third inches. Elasticity. Very elastic. Status. Good. Fitness. 92%. Black magic affinity. 90%. In fact, this one is quite suitable for Sha Ji. He just waved it lightly, and a group of chirping birds flew out from the tip of the wand. The birds hovered over everyone's heads for a long time before gradually disappearing. Oh, this wand suits you perfectly, sir. Um, Mr. Ollivander, can I try some other wands? Oh, sir, the wand chooses the wizard, not the wizard chooses the wand. Well, since you insist, even though I think this one is already the most suitable for you. Ollivander was about to take out another several wands that were previously considered candidates based on Shaji's measurements. Sorry, can you show me the third box from the top to the bottom of the shelf on the left, which is the third floor from the bottom and the fifth column? Shaji sincerely asked Rode. Ollivander was actually a little unhappy, but Shaji only had a charismatic aura to protect his body, and his request was always unbearable to refuse. Well, well, although that wand may not suit you, there is no harm in trying. Well, although I don't know what your motivation for choosing that wand is. Soon, Ollivander took the wand that Shaji was looking at. Ollivander opened the box and handed Shaji a moyu like wand inside. This and the panel of the wand appeared in front of Shaji again. Item. Wand. Stand body. Black sandalwood. Wand core. Dragon heartstring. Length. 12 and 3 quarter inches. Elasticity. Very hard. Status. Good. Fitness. 100%. Black magic affinity. 99%. As soon as Shaji got this heavy wand, she immediately felt something different. If it was said that he had a master-servant relationship with the captured wand before, then the relationship between this wand and himself was that of a partner. The fit is higher and smoother. It feels like my own arm. With a wave of Shaji's wand, a box on Ollivander's desk twisted into a beautiful phoenix. The fire phoenix sang a melodious song, flew around the heads of the crowd, and then stopped on the counter again, with a pair of smart eyes rolling, looking curiously at the person in front of him. This scene stunned everyone present. Ollivander covered his mouth, oh my god. I've never seen a wand that fits so well with a wizard. So you found this wand just now because it was calling you. Professor McGonagall was also shocked, what an exquisite shape-shifting technique. Even the eye Shendu is so lifelike. Is it just a shape-shifting technique that an 11-year-old wizard can use? Conjure a phoenix, Professor McGonagall can do it too. It can even be more vivid than the one Shaji changed. But Shaji is only 11 years old this year, and she hasn't even officially entered Hogwarts yet. Just relying on the half a month of studying in the Whirly family, his achievements are already higher than what most adult wizards spent decades achieving. This is really shocking. For a split second, Professor McGonagall even had the ridiculous idea that Shaji was Merlin's reincarnation. Shaji just looked at the phoenix in front of her, feeling dissatisfied. Unfortunately, 
I have never seen a real phoenix, I have only seen pictures of them in the library of Kashan Della's house. Compared with the fox in the movie, the phoenix in the illustration is a bit different and much more beautiful, so Shaji is not sure what the real phoenix looks like. Of course, the phoenix here refers to the phoenix recorded in this world, not the phoenix in the oriental mythology of the previous life. If the phoenix in oriental mythology was brought out, it would be a bit of a bully. Professor McGonagall said excitedly, this is already a very remarkable achievement. You have never seen a real phoenix, but you can conjure such a lifelike phoenix by relying on the illustrations in books and your own imagination. Not to mention the little wizard, it is I haven't seen a few adult wizards who can do this. Oh, Merlin, look at those clever eyes. This is the eyes of my owl snowball. When I first saw it, I was attracted by its eyes, so when I transformed into this phoenix, I used its eyes as a reference. In case you don't know, Dumbledore owns a phoenix. It's called Fox. If you want to see it, I don't think he'd say no. Really, Shaji and Professor McGonagall then began to exchange experience on transfiguration. The Granger family also stepped forward, looking at the phoenix in front of them curiously. At this time, Hermione's heart was full of shock. When she heard Shaji and Professor McGonagall talking about transfiguration along the way, she hadn't had an intuitive understanding of transfiguration. There was even an idea that Shaji was just talking on paper. But now, when Shaji transformed a cardboard box into a lifelike phoenix with her transfiguration technique, the wonder of magic and Shaji's profound knowledge of transfiguration deeply shocked this always proud girl, making her adore Shaji in an instant. Can I achieve such an achievement in the future? Ollivander said with a smile, I've seen Fox, and your phoenix is more beautiful than Fox and this wand is more suitable for you. So, it turns out that the wand does choose a wizard, doesn't it? Shaji nodded in agreement, but in fact, he found it through the system panel. Snapped. The phoenix that was looking around suddenly twisted and turned back into the small box containing the wand. Shaji sighed, the duration is very short. It seems that I really don't have much talent in transfiguration. Professor McGonagall almost choked on Shaji's Versailles. Shaji, you are only 11 years old now, and your achievements have already surpassed most wizards. If you are said to have no talent, then even Dumbledore would feel ashamed. A group of people walked out of the wand shop, because they were all buying school items, so Shaji simply acted with them. Under the leadership of Professor McGonagall, Shaji's shopping progress has also been greatly accelerated. Since Mr. Granger hadn't exchanged galleons at Gringotts, he had more funds, so Hermione also went to buy an owl. Shaji only remembered that in Hermione's original book, no one bought an owl. A small action of his own has changed the plot, so Shaji is secretly vigilant not to rely too much on the known plot. At critical moments, you have to rely on your own prophecy. A group of people acted together, but it was also lively. Shaji unexpectedly found that she still liked this lively atmosphere. In the final analysis, Shaji is still a person who is afraid of being alone. After buying everything on the list, Shaji and Professor McGonagall bid them farewell. Son, you have left the Whirly family's estate, so where do you plan to end up next? I plan to stay at the Leaky Cauldron for a while, anyway, school starts in just over a month. Shaji laughed. You know I don't lack galleons, so don't worry. Professor McGonagall nodded helplessly. She knew that Shaji was an orphan, but it was not an option to live in bars all the time. She thought Shaji should have a home. After getting along with Shaji for a long time, she liked this child more and more. He is smart, polite and kind-hearted. And most importantly, he does not lack courage. Shaji only knew what happened in Albania. She heard from Dumbledore that when she was born, she dared to copy the wand and hunt those dark wizards desperately. This is simply a born Gryffindor. Thinking of the possibility that Gryffindor will usher in a talented young wizard this year, Professor McGonagall couldn't help but smile happily. After seeing off Professor McGonagall, Shaji turned to say goodbye to the Granger family. After getting along for half a day, Shaji has become very familiar with them. Shaji's charismatic halo, no one can avoid, he is completely the kind of existence that can increase his favorability just by meeting him. Hermione, if there is anything you don't understand, you can ask me through the owl. Hermione might still feel unconvinced if someone else said that, 
but Shaji had just shown her magical talent that even Professor McGonagall was full of praise for. So Hermione nodded obediently, holding a small suitcase that Shaji had cast the untraced stretch curse on, secretly decided to memorize all the textbooks and magic books in the suitcase when she returned home. So the boy has learned a lot from the Whirly Library. Dumbledore sat in his comfortable chair, his eyes sparkling. And across from him, sat Professor McGonagall, I don't mean to offend, Albus. I mean, even when you were young, you didn't have such a terrifying talent. Absolutely not, to be exact, Dumbledore corrected. So we can't let that kid go astray. Yeah, what happened to him, Merlin, is really heart-wrenching. If he can come to my house, I will definitely teach him well. Professor McGonagall said, staring at Dumbledore. My dear professor, you know that sorting depends on the judgment of the sorting hat, and we have no right to interfere. Of course, but I still think he is the most suitable for Gryffindor. Professor McGonagall said in a positive tone. It seems that this child has been able to take charge of himself to some extent. Dumbledore nodded, then grabbed a piece of parchment, picked up a quill and wrote quickly. Let him get that thing back for me, what do you think? By the way, and Harry, he hasn't received the notice yet. I think he needs to make more friends of the same age. You know, this I was going to leave it to Hagrid. Dumbledore, Shaji is only an 11-year-old child, are you sure he can really complete the task you gave him? Professor McGonagall was a little anxious. Why not? Instead, I think he's fully capable of the job. I think you've already seen what he's capable of. Well, you're always right anyway. Professor McGonagall seemed a little aggrieved. It had been a while since Professor McGonagall had left, and Dumbledore was still brooding over the parchment. After an unknown amount of time, he suddenly smiled, then folded the parchment and handed it to Phoenix Fox. Give him this letter, he really wants to see you. Fox picked up the letter, flashed the fire, and disappeared in place. Dumbledore turned his head and said happily, Severus, you're here. Would you like a glass of honey water and some lemon sherbet? I heard you're still going to enroll that kid normally. Snape's face was gloomy. Of course, why not? I think you're too old to be fooled. Do you know how many people that kid killed with the killing curse in Albania? Do you want to raise another Dark Lord? Snape said coldly. No, on the contrary, if he is allowed to wander outside, it will actually push him to go astray. Then put him in Azkaban. He killed people with the killing curse, it's a fact. Severus, Shaji is just a victim. When he resisted, he didn't even know what a death curse is. And we can't let the victim be held accountable for resisting and hurting the perpetrator. Dumbledore said calmly, look at the children saved by Shaji. I was in Albania at the time and witnessed what kind of torture those innocent children were subjected to. Snape was silent for a while, I'll keep an eye on him. If he shows any signs, I won't be soft. I also advise you, Dumbledore, don't trust this kid too much. Actually, just now, I decided to let him retrieve that thing for me, and let him reach Harry. Dumbledore folded his hands on the desk, looking at Snape calmly. What did you say? Snape's expression changed drastically. Dumbledore, how dare you? How dare you trust him casually? An amnesiac, gifted little wizard who was taken to Albania. Dumbledore, don't forget why you went to Albania. Of course I do, Severus. I'm going to Albania because I found traces of that man in Albania. Snape excitedly put his hands on Dumbledore's desk and yelled at him, then you should understand that this kid is so ruthless, he might very well be the Dark Lord's new servant. Or, more seriously, he is the Dark Lord himself. Maybe it's him. It's just that he was resurrected as another person using a special method that neither you nor I know about. Otherwise, have you really seen such a young wizard with such terrifying talent? Dumbledore, and as far as I know you know, that kid came from the Wood Orphanage. That's where the Dark Lord grew up. Don't you really have no association at all? He can't be Voldemort, Voldemort can't do things like save people. What if he's using this to win your trust? It was the trick he was best at when he was young. Snape gasped, then said in a deep voice. If he's really you know who, you'd hand over that thing and Potter to him. And you promised me that nothing will happen to Potter. I trust Shah Ji. I know who Voldemort is, and I know what his Death Eaters are. Dumbledore remained calm. Do you really trust him, Dumbledore? You're testing him with that thing. 
I know you, Dumbledore. But no matter what you plan, you shouldn't involve Potter. In case you lose the bet. Since when did you start caring so much about Harry? Snape was breathless, and after a terrible silence, you know, I'm for her, for Lily. Shaji opened a room at the Leaky Cauldron as her temporary residence. After seeing off the Granger family, Shaji went shopping around the world of muggles and bought a lot of things. What pots and pans, seasonings, and a lot of ingredients, and of course, Nagini's rations. The time in the ring is static, and this feature just keeps the food fresh. Shaji bought a lot of meat and stuffed it all into a big bag with a traceless stretching spell, and then put the big bag back into the ring. After testing, the meat in this big bag, even though it was put into a bag with the traceless stretching spell, could still be kept fresh in the ring. Of course, the space containing living creatures, such as Newt's suitcase, can never be put into the ring, unless all the magical creatures inside are cleaned out. Shaji only bought so many ingredients, naturally because she had already had enough of the so-called food in England. He was good at cooking in his previous life. The mouth is also tricky. I have endured it for so long, and now I have reached the limit. He ate hot pot in his room. Although there are not many suitable seasonings that can be bought in England, they can still be used. So Shaji eats very well. He felt that he was more suitable for Hufflepuff. The same love for food, the same desire to be indifferent to the world, plain and simple. As for the other three colleges, he didn't want to go. Although he knew that Cassandella would definitely be sorted into Slytherin, he didn't want to go to Slytherin either. I just got rid of the suspicion of the future Dark Lord, isn't it just a draw to enter Slytherin? As for Law and Keluo, at Shaji's current level, does it still need to be so curt? And Gryffindor, Shaji didn't want to enter either. Although it might disappoint Professor McGonagall, he always felt that many bad things would happen if he entered Gryffindor. So Hufflepuff is better, at least he won't be suspected of being a reserve member of the Dark Lord. I can hang out in Hufflepuff, develop quietly, accumulate strength, and use the identity of a prophet to give Dumbledore a spoiler from time to time. It's best to kill that noseless monster. Even if he still can't kill him in the end, and he is resurrected in the end, then he should have accumulated a certain amount of strength at that time, and self-protection is always no problem. As for how to get the sorting hat to sort him into Hufflepuff, it was completely difficult for Shaji who had a full level occlumency. Shaji, who was full of food and drink, lay on the bed, thinking wildly, and fell into a dreamland in a daze. I don't know how long it took, Shaji found that there seemed to be something warm on her body that was arching herself. He opened his eyes in a daze, and then saw a big fiery red bird standing on his bed beside him. Are you Fox? His mind finally came to his senses. Fox threw a letter and a folded piece of parchment in front of Shaji. Shaji picked up the uncooked mutton on the table and handed it to Fox. Fox picked up a piece of mutton and swallowed it in one gulp. It seemed to feel that the taste was good, and then picked up the second piece. Shaji reached out and touched Fox's feathers. Fox's feathers were smooth and warm. After that, he handed Fox a plate of beef. Then I picked up the letter and looked at it. The letter was tied with a rope, and it was stamped top secret. Shaji put the letter down, then picked up the folded parchment, and after opening it, a small key fell out of the parchment. Shaji was a little dazzled by the circled words on the parchment, but he finally understood the content. After reading it, Shaji was stunned for a while. Then, on the back of the parchment, wrote a few words and handed it to Fox. Fox had already wiped out the mutton and beef on the plate, grabbed the letter in Shaji's hand, and disappeared on the spot in a flash of fire. Shaji felt that something was wrong with the plot, and Dumbledore actually asked him to deliver Harry Potter's acceptance letter to Harry Potter himself on his birthday, and then took him to Diagon Alley to buy items. After that, he took the Philosopher's Stone away from the Gringotts Golden Curry, and brought it to him in person on the day the school started. No, aren't these all Hagrid's jobs? How did it fall on my head? And it was clearly written on the parchment, instead of vaguely telling him to take an item and bring it back to Dumbledore, it was clearly written, it was the Sorcerer's Stone. And by the way, he explained to Shaji in the letter what is the magic stone, what can turn a stone into gold, and what can make the elixir of life. Is this something I should know? He trusts me that much. I'm not Hagrid. Dumbledore shouldn't have trusted me so much. Is Dumbledore testing me? 
He's going to test me with the real Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter. Shaji put the letter and Harry Potter's vault key into the ring, then sighed slowly. After all, he still suspects that I have something to do with the noseless man, but he also has great confidence in me, otherwise, he would not place such a heavy bet. What a contradictory idea. If I really have something to do with that noseless man, I must turn around and take the Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter and run to claim credit for the noseless monster. After Shah Ji figured it out, she lay down again. I have a piece of the Sorcerer's Stone myself. What's so rare? When I take the Philosopher's Stone back to you, and then send Harry Potter safely to Hogwarts, all my suspicions will be cleared away, and when I enter Hufflepuff, no one will think that I it's the Dark Lord. Of course, the premise is that the system does not add chaos. Ding. The system releases a new mission. Tisk, I have nothing to say about it. Hey, what are you doing? You're keeping people from sleeping. Although the system's rewards have always been good, the tasks it issued have always been quite tricky. Ding. The reward for the success of this mission is that the host will randomly obtain a brand new magic system. And there is no penalty for mission failure. A brand new magic system. What is that? Shah Ji asked suspiciously. Ding. The brand new magic system is a magic system that doesn't exist in this world. That is to say, when the time comes, I will randomly comprehend a magic system from another world. Shah Ji immediately reacted. Ding. That's right, as long as the host completes the task, he can randomly get a set of magic systems from other worlds, and the magic levels in it are all at full level. Well, you have successfully aroused my interest. However, it is the first time for you to talk about the task reward first, and then the task content. And it is such a generous reward. So, this task will be very difficult. Shah Ji felt helpless said. However, he still intends to take over. After all, there is no penalty for failure. If he succeeds, it will greatly increase his strength. Ding. It is detected that the host is about to contact the savior Harry Potter. Task content. The greatest black, white wizard should have his own strong supporters. Brainwash the savior, develop the savior into his own supporters, and teach him to fight back with fire, ten times the reward, let him become a ruthless black, let him become a decisive hero. Finally, with him as the core, quietly pull up a team that is comparable to a saint, comparable to an elite team of warriors. Hiss. Shah Ji gasped, system, you want me to die, so just say it, if it fails, you still need to punish me. Just send it, okay. Under Dumbledore's nose do you think it is possible to do this? Also, is your mustache really okay? Is your cover-up still necessary? Ding, this task is actually not very difficult, just let the host transform the savior into his own shape. Tisk, you have a system, why are you talking so dirty? Also, isn't this asking me to be a nanny? But I just want to hang on. Ding. Dumbledore's plan is to be a nanny, and the host's task is to subtly indoctrinate his ideas into the savior and his companions. Then train them to become thugs. Ah no, it's to train them to become stronger. There is still an essential difference between the nanny behavior of training it to become stronger and caring for its growth. Shah Ji understood what the system meant, and a picture suddenly flashed in his mind. Harry. I can't do it. I really can't do it. With a sad face. The vicious Shah Ji slapped Harry on the face, and then roared, What is your look, what is your look? What are your two lines of tears? Your tears can overthrow those Death Eaters. Can you save the wizarding world? Think about the people who have died so far. Don't you feel ashamed? Our battle is a battle that must be won. Stand up, and we continue to train. Shah Ji shivered, This style of painting doesn't feel right. But, so interesting. There should always be a criterion for judging whether the task is completed or not. How do I know to what extent the task is considered complete? Ding. At the very least, when the savior meets an enemy, the first curse that comes to mind is not the disarming curse, but the explosion curse, crushing curse, etc. Understood. In fact, there is some truth to the system statement. Why do we need to use a spell like the disarming curse to deal with death eaters? The opposite side is full of big melons. They are all here to kill you. Kindness to the enemy is cruelty to oneself. Shah Ji thought that to deal with desperados like Death Eaters, one should be more ruthless and crazier than them. It should be like Mrs. Weasley, raising her hand to Bella, a small combo of petrification curse and crushing curse, and send it away directly. 
Letting these Death Eaters even enter Azkaban become a luxury, this is the correct answer. It was a difficult task, and the hard part was that it had to be done right under Dumbledore's nose, but it was challenging and risked being misunderstood. Can it be easily misunderstood? Sha Ji was originally from an embarrassing background, and has a previous record of the unforgivable curse. Now he not only brought down the savior, but also formed cliques to form a small group, so he decided to become the third generation of the Dark Lord. But Sha Ji doesn't want to be the Dark Lord. Sha Ji sighed, since the task has been accepted, let's work hard to complete it. A plan gradually took shape in Sha Ji's mind. It seems that in order to complete this task, Hufflepuff will not be able to go. Sha Zigo's path to the peak is broken. Ah, my fishing career. Well, the first step is to get rid of Dumbledore's doubts about himself, which is easy. Just bring Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone back to Dumbledore unscathed. If I remember correctly, on the day Harry went to withdraw the money, Gringotts would be broken into once by a dark wizard. This black wizard should be the possessed Professor Quirrell. Harry Potter's birthday is July 31st, well, it's tomorrow. In the original book, Harry's uncle moved directly to a broken house on a sea reef because he didn't want to receive any more letters from Hogwarts. Although Sha Ji learned the address of Uncle Harry's house from Dumbledore's letter, but now she doesn't know whether the plot of Uncle Harry moving to the sea reef will still happen. If that happens, Sha Ji will have to find out where the reef is. Suddenly, a little snowy owl flew in from the window, it was Sha Ji's owl snowball, and it brought a reply from Kashan Della. Sha Ji saw Shwecho and nodded, yes, there is a way. Sha Ji felt that she was really busy today. During the day, I bought things for school with the Granger family, and then in the evening, I went shopping in muggle shops for a long time, and finally came back to eat hot pot at night and lay down for a while. So it's really late now. If tomorrow is July 31st, then prove it. Now Sha Ji should be leaving. However, this does not prevent Sha Ji from reading Cash and Della's reply first. Get rid of those words that secretly complained about his lack of conscience and recorrect some irony. The general meaning came out. Little Snowball is very cute, she likes it very much, and the name is also very cute. She misses Sha Ji very much and hopes to meet again on the Hogwarts Express sooner. Also, I hope Sha Ji will continue to write to her. Sha Ji nodded. As expected of Cassandella, she was very good at speaking ambiguously and ironically. It took him some effort to translate. But now there was no time to write to her. Sha Ji went around Diagon Alley again and bought some things. Then, in a corner where no one saw, he handed Little Snowball a piece of parchment, go, give it to Harry Potter. The Little Snowball looked very happy it seemed to like flying in the sky all day long. It is a very energetic owl. It grabbed the blank parchment and flew straight up. But when it soared in the night sky, it suddenly felt an indescribable fear in its heart. It turned its head to look, only to see a cloud of black mist full of evil aura closely following it. Don't be nervous, it's me, you just fly, I'll follow you. Little Snowball called out in protest, and then continued to fly forward, but because it was followed by such a peerless monster, it flew not as happily as before, and the psychological pressure was a bit heavy. Sha Ji just followed the owl to find out where Harry Potter was. Just after flying for a long time, there was a storm. However, Sha Ji, who turned into silence, didn't feel anything. Their flying speed was still very fast, after a while, Sha Ji saw the lonely reef in the sea. Seeing the dilapidated wooden house on the rock, Sha Ji just smiled, and Dursley still brought Harry here. Dot dot dot, Harry was lying on the most inhospitable floor, trying to curl himself up under a very thin, ragged quilt. Now he was cold and hungry, and the storm outside made Harry toss and turn on the ground, who couldn't sleep at all. It seemed that, as Uncle Vernon said, no one would deliver letters to him in the rain. The thought made him feel worse. Harry stared blankly at the luminous watch on Dudley's chubby wrist. In a few minutes, he will be eleven years old. However, no one should remember his birthday. I don't know where the person who wrote to him is now. Why was he in such a hurry to write to himself? What is the content of the letter? Why did the Dursleys have such a big reaction after seeing the contents? His heart is full of why, but now no one can stand up and give him an answer. I don't know if I can manage to steal a letter when I go back to Privet Drive. 
In 20 seconds, he will be 11 years old. He silently counted down in his heart, thinking that when the countdown was over, he would say happy birthday to himself. Maybe he should wake Dudley up and get mad at him. The hands on the dial moved slowly, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Harry was about to say happy birthday to himself. Suddenly, the sound of the storm outside stopped. Then he heard a boy's voice coming from outside the door. Open sesame. Boom. There was a loud noise. The old door was shattered into pieces. Uncle Vernon ran out, rolling and crawling, with a rifle in his hand. Who? I warn you. I have a gun. He stared at the dark door, as if there was some bloodthirsty beast hidden outside. Harry also looked out the door nervously, not knowing what was going on. The next moment, a well-dressed, handsome Chinese boy of about the same age as Harry walked in while frowning and shaking off the water on his body. Oh, Kassan Della will kill me, she chose this dress for me herself, the boy murmured. You, who are you? This is breaking into a private house. Get the hell out. Seeing that the other party was just a boy around Harry's age, Uncle Fernan became courageous immediately. Dudley stood with Aunt Petunia, looking at the boy strangely. Shaji only glanced at the scene in the room, and sighed, well, it seems that his deterrent power is indeed not as great as Hagrid who is half a titan. In the original book, when Hagrid came, the opposite party was terribly scared. He looked at the thin boy who stood up coweringly, and smiled, so, you are Harry Potter. His eyes rested on Harry's forehead for a moment. Boy, can't you hear me when I'm talking to you? I think you lacked a lesson. Where's your adult? Uncle Fernan stepped forward, wanting to lift Shaji up and throw it out. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.